Hello everybody, welcome back to Star Heights. Uh, we're doing a fun little in-between episode, sort of. It's, it's not a full session, um, but in talking to one of the players, we decided that there was a, a little scene that needed to happen before the next session, since the next session, as I mentioned uh, at the end of session number two, is going to be happening uh, at you know the beginning of the following week. Uh, and that's a lot of time to pass. And there is uh, one loose end that hasn't quite been tied up, uh, that probably would be tied up in that amount of time. Uh, so hello, Nicole. Hello. You're, you're the one that's going to be with us today. We're going to be uh, doing a little exploration of something that Alex needs to take care of. So what is this thing that Alex needs to deal with? This thing that Alex needs to deal with is talking to Evan and trying to apologize and kind of get on better terms. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we're going to get to explore how well that goes. Uh, but let's, let's set the scene. So... You wanted to see a particular kind of scene. Oh, give me just a sec. There we go. Uh, you wanted to see a particular kind of scene, and I've set the stage, and we're all ready to go. Also, actually, before we start, uh, something else that was decided as well uh, is that, of course, uh, as a rule of masks, uh, players can freely give influence to whoever they want. Uh, and at the end of last session, of course, with the end of session moves, everyone gave one, well, not everyone, but the, the people that felt it was appropriate gave one influence out to characters of their choice. Uh, and Nicole had a hard time deciding whether or not Alex wanted to give influence to Echo or Joey, and ultimately gave it to Echo. Uh, but she later decided she wanted to give it to them both, which, you know, she's allowed to do. It's in her power. Uh, so just for the record, uh, Joey and Echo both have influence over Alex. Uh, all sheets have been edited accordingly. Uh, that's just for posterity's sake. So, yeah, Alex is, uh, has been very close to Echo and Joey since coming here. Echo's been giving a lot of attention and reaching out, and uh, Alex and Joey have been kind of a power duo so far. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how they go. But let's move into our scene here as I set the stage for us. Uh, so, after last time, uh, you guys had class on Tuesday, and you guys went to gym and, you know, participated in dodgeball and everything, and it was a, it was a great time. A lot of, a lot of laughs were had. Uh, and now, you know, it's, it's Wednesday or Thursday, uh, but point is, it's later in the week, uh, after school, uh, and actually after your last, uh, period of the day. Uh, which was likely crime-fighting class, so this is probably Wednesday or Friday in that case. Um, on this day, you had a lecture from Nightwalker. Not much of note happened, uh, but you guys were, of course, discussing proper procedure in combat, you know, what to do in certain situations, like if somebody pulls a knife on you. Uh, and there was a little bit of practical demonstration, but it was mostly just sort of getting these moves uh, into your system and sort of seeing, like, how to professionally defend yourself, at least with beginner courses. Um, but at the end of the class day, the bell rang. Everybody uh, headed on their own way out. You know, you said goodbye to all your friends. Uh, and as the classroom starts dwindling down, you sort of look around and notice that after the last student leaves, it's just you and Evan left. Uh, and you know, you, you kind of take a moment. You maybe slow down a little bit, sort of seeing this opportunity, but noticing that Nightwalker is still in the room before he gathers up his things and picks up his, uh, you know, his teacher's pad. He moves over to the center of the room, and on his way out, he looks to you two, gives you a nod, and says, Have a good rest of the evening, you two. And he... Good evening, Mr. Nightwalker. And he heads on out. And now you are left alone in the classroom with Evan, as he seems to be getting his things together, not in any particular rush, he kind of seems to be minding his own business, you know, checking his phone. Alex is kind of at her own desk, putting her things away. She obviously notices that she and Evan are the last two in here, and she takes a few minutes debating, um, whether she wants to try to take this opportunity, or whether to just let it go, but 
as she sees Evan kind of packing his stuff up as well, she kind of hesitantly turns to him and goes, Hey, Evan? He looks over and says, Oh, uh, hey, uh, what's up? Do you think we could talk for a minute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he sets his stuff down and kind of leans against his desk and faces you fully and he says, Hey, so, uh, what's up? Do you mind if I come sit next to you? Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Kind of sits down here. I just wanted to talk about um, everything that happened the other day with the race. Yeah, yeah. Things uh, things got a little a little crazy there. Uh, and I, I feel feel like I didn't get. Um, really a chance to apologize as much as I wanted to, so I just wanted to let you know how sorry I am, and if there's anything I can do to make up for it, just say the word. <laughs> uh, I... He kind of brushes his hand through his hair, and he, he doesn't seem like he's feeling awkward about having to talk to you, but it does seem like there's a little bit of, of awkwardness there, and he just says... I, I'm, I'm sorry, too. I mean, not about getting my head hit on the ground. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I guess this is the first time I've had to, uh, talk to someone about this kind of thing. <sighs> Things were a little, a little raw the other day. Uh, you know, for, for good reason, but, you know, uh, I guess I didn't really quite know how to handle uh, what went on, you know. It's not every day you have to talk to somebody about the fact that they uh, that they gave you a concussion. But also, you know, I, I know you didn't mean to. Things got heated in the moment. We were all racing towards the finish line. Uh, but. I, I do appreciate that you came to apologize. I, I just also, you know, I, it's kind of shitty for me to, you know, avoid you in lunch and everything. I just kind of didn't know what to say about it all. I can understand that. I, uh, I wasn't sure what to say either for the last few days. I didn't want to put too much pressure on you to try to talk to me. Um, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure you were okay. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, and you, you know, you, you notice that he has since taken the bandages off of his head. Uh, it seems like, uh, the, you know, Catalyst, uh, the hero that runs the nurse's office here, uh, it seems like Catalyst's concoction, uh, really did speed up his recovery, uh, pretty quickly, uh, you would imagine, considering he busted his head and had a concussion. Uh, but, you know, he, he rubs his head and chuckles a little bit, and he says... Uh, well, we we are here to do hero work and learn how to fight crime and all. I just, uh, I guess it kind of surprised me to, um, you know, experience a workplace injury on the first day, but hey, what can you do? Uh, but you know, I, I'm, I'm also, I'm, I'm sorry about what I said, uh, back at the nurse's office. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember, you, you might not, but... I don't know. I, I had a kind of bit of a snarky response to uh, how I felt about everything, mentioning, you know, villains and all, and, uh, you know, that, that was kind of shitty. Again, I, I know you really didn't mean to. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. W what's there to say, right? Like... Yeah, it, yeah no harm done. Well... <laughs> Yeah. To me, anyway. Yeah. Um. Hey, I, I gotta take some stuff to my locker. You wanna walk and talk? Yeah, I can do that. Sweet. And he stands up and picks up his things, and he gestures over his shoulder, and he's like, uh, "Where? where's your locker at? Mine's down the hall to the right.
Do I know this? Um, does my yeah, you can you, you you can say whatever you want. Your locker can be wherever you want today. Yeah, I'm just mine's in the same direction. Cool, cool. And he heads out into the hallway with you. And yeah, you 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 know that your your locker's in kind of a similar direction, especially since you're both in the same course and have the same homeroom. Uh, but we head to this map. And you you know that your locker, based on where he's kind of heading towards and stopping, you know that your locker's a bit further down the way. Uh, but he walks to about here and starts messing with his locker. You know, he's, he's putting away all of his school books and, and one of his duffel bags and all that. Uh, and he just sort of chuckles. You know, he was kind of making a little bit of small talk on the way here, but he, he chuckles and continues and says, I have to hand it to you, though. I mean, your, your powers are crazy strong, you know that? Yeah, I do. Sometimes it makes me wonder if I'm fit to be a hero, you know? Well, I guess with that much power, it's kind of hard to control, huh? Did you, did you get that? I didn't get that. That cut out again. You're, you're fine. Uh, yeah, he, he just kind of chuckles and says, uh, Yeah, I, I guess with that much power, it's kind of hard to control, huh? Yeah. I'm hoping that I'll get better over time, but especially everything that happened with you, it felt for a little bit like it was a mistake to come here. Yeah, and as you're talking with Evan, you know, you definitely still feel that guilt. Like, even though he's sort of coming around, he's talking to you again, uh, it, it almost obviously feels a little less like it's guilt that revolves around him and, you know, general guilt. Maybe it's a little more deep-seated. Maybe it's a little little connected to things that happened in the past. But, uh, you know, you're, you're mulling this over, and he nods to you. He closes his locker, finishing putting his things away, and kind of leans against it. And he says, yeah, I, uh, I don't know what your situation with your powers is. Uh, I barely understand what it is you do. It looks like gravity, maybe? But, uh, Yeah, it is gravity. Yeah, but, um... You know, I'm not sure if you were in some kind of accident. I don't know if you were born with your powers or what, but, uh, you know, I, I pretty suddenly got my own powers. Uh, you know, he, he continues on and talks about this. And he says, uh, it was nothing too crazy, but, you know, me and my friends were hanging out at this, you know, hanging out at this factory. Uh, you know, we kind of headed out late at night and um you know we were just kind of goofing around uh there was this weird there's this weird glowing stuff that the factory was messing with we, we didn't quite know what it was uh but but some things happened while we were there and uh well before i knew it next day my hair was all kind of crazy colors and i could control it and do whatever i wanted with it and uh, it's kind of crazy, you know, uh, suddenly getting superpowers like that. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I definitely don't think people were meant to be able to control gravity or their hair like I can, but now we can, and uh, we just got to try to make the best of it, I guess. Yeah, I guess we do. And if it's for what it's worth, I think you'll make a great hero. <laughs> Thanks. And... You know, as much as there was the big accident and, you know, for for as raw as I've been about it, I think you could be an awesome hero. You know, your, your powers seem like they're hard to control and it seems like it's easy to destroy stuff. But I mean, you know, I was looking at the leaderboard and I mean, we're perfectly tied on there, which, you know, kind of kind of stings a little bit since you had one of your grades taken down. But then I kind of started thinking, and I was like, dang, you, know, you you did really well in that race. You you and Joey were neck and neck for the whole thing, and I barely caught up at the end. Uh, and that's because, you know, you guys had to stop for a bit. But if you didn't have your grade taken off of that race, you'd probably be towards the top of the class. And, you know, that, that kind of sucks. So, 
I'm, I'm not gonna worry about holding that against you anymore. But, I ask that you do one thing for me in return. What would that be? I want to be your rival. And he kind of gives you a cheeky grin. A rival? Why? I mean, you know, Gabe's pretty crazy strong. We, we've all seen him. But I think people are sleeping on what you could be capable of. You're very powerful. Probably one of the strongest people in the class. And hey, I mean, we've had some opportunities to talk and... I'd like to get to know you a little more, but more importantly, I don't want to let this drag me down, and I don't want it to drag you down either. So, we're going to push you up the, to the position that you deserve to be in, and I'm going to try to climb up and get higher than you. I want to I wanna fight you because you're one of the best in the class, you know? Or at least I think you could be. So I'm going to be your rival. I guess you don't really get too much say in it, but, uh, you know, figure that's better than not talking to each other. That works for me. <laughs> and, uh, well, don't sleep on what I'm capable of either. I may have made some mistakes and I didn't last too long in dodgeball, but, uh, you know, I'll show you what I'm capable of. Especially when we jump into our practices, I think, Nightwalker said on Monday? Well, I'm looking forward to it. Nice. Any, you know, he, he goes for a fist bump with you, but you, you see that the red and blue tendrils from his sleeve kind of come up and wrap around his hand uh, and look it looks sort of like a red and blue tie-dye sort of like his hair uh, you know wraps around his hand almost in a way kind of like a suit but only wraps around his forearm as he goes to give you a little fist bump and I give him a fist bump back and smile back at him he, he grins at you and of course in, in the back of your head you're you're kind of mulling over all of this. It feels great that you were able to sort of close the distance between you and Evan. You know, you, you maybe wonder if he has any sort of resentment about it, but you kind of have to just take him at his word. But beyond that, there's still that guilt eating away at you. The, the guilt of, you know, hurting someone, destroying something. It's all a little too familiar to you. And, you know, you, you still have these urges to make whatever sacrifices you can for the sake of other people. And it's kind of shifting away from Evan, which is healthy, but kind of latching onto yourself in general because of everything that's gone on with you. Uh, but as all of these thoughts sort of rattle around in your head, you come back to it as Evan gives you a pat on the shoulder and says, really though, no hard feelings. And uh, hey, maybe we can practice together sometime. I'd love that. <laughs> I need to get a little more used to uh, fighting against you and what you're capable of if I don't want to get hurt again. And, uh, actually, you, you're you pretty good friends with Joey, too, right? Yeah. I'd like to hang out with all your friends sometime. I mean, I know we all, you know, we all sit at lunch together every day, but, I mean, I don't know. We should all go out to the mall or, I don't know, to the park or just do something together. It'd be more fun than just hanging around on campus all day. You're right about that. Anyway. Uh, thanks for talking to me. Thank you. He kind of nods and chuckles a bit and just says, uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow for classes. I'll see you tomorrow, Evan. And he nods to you. And he walks down the hallway with, you know, a different duffel bag over his shoulder. You think maybe he's heading off to practice on, you know, whatever sports team he may have joined. You're not really quite sure, but he walks off and you're left alone in the hallway for a bit to your own devices, and how's Alex feeling about everything? Alex is feeling, she's still feeling the weight of the guilt. Um, as you said, it kind of went from being specific to what happened with Evan to being just kind of a broad feeling, kind of a guilt and a concern for what her powers are capable of, but at the same time having a friend and a rival is giving her hope that she can do something better with her powers than what's happened in the past. All right. Well, uh, with that, you, know, you turn on your heel, head off in your own direction to go to your locker and make your way to your dorm. 
And uh, that's all she wrote. It's her scene between Alex and Evan here. And yeah, it was, it was good right. to be able to, to, you know, to bring you guys together and have you talk about what happened. Um, now I have a rival. Yeah, you have a little rival. So that's always fun. <laughs> It'll be fun to see how you guys interact now that uh, he's he's issued this challenge to you and you've accepted. Uh, but yeah, as for that, that's going to be all for us for now. And uh, next time you guys see us, we're going to be going back to class once again. So thank you guys for watching, and you will see us next time. Uh, bye bye Say bye, Nicole. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.